I'm <clears throat> I'm doing this project Poppy at 2.0 because I want to gain more power to drive action behind the statements I make. I don't like how themes of rape is handled in movies. I'm not saying that you should not make a movie or about it or a story about it. I'm saying the way that it is handled is very, very unsettling. If rape is part of the storyline in filmmaking, there are endless, countless ways to deliver that information. When the option a director, a male director chooses, is one that is explicitly violent and visually graphic, showing and drawing out the scene longer than it needs to be. And by needs to be, I am speaking in the act of function. The function of a scene is to deliver the information for the viewer to understand the story. There are endless ways to deliver the fact that this person was raped. If you choose the one, the option that is graphic, extended, it is a stylistic choice. Once again, I'm not saying these movies about rape or stories about rape should not exist. It is important that it does. But I am challenging the culture, the artists, the filmmakers, the directors, the men who think nothing of this situation that we've come to somehow in culture. If you think nothing of it, I want you to ask yourself this. If there are so many different ways that you could convey this message, story, and information, yet you choose a specific version of it, that is a stylistic choice. It is not necessary, it is a choice that you've made. If you don't need to be showing graphic scenes of sexual crime and violence on screen, film it, produce it, showcase it, if you don't need to do that to convey this message, yet you do, you're choosing to do so as a stylistic choice and you it is your preference, your taste. Your taste in movies is one where you are Right now at the position I am in, at this Airbnb filming on my iPhone to what, 200, 300 subscribers on YouTube, this message isn't gonna leave the kind of impact or make the kind of change that I see necessary for the actual world to be different. I'm sure this can have great effects in small trickling ways and the personal ways to the viewer and to you and maybe people. There's many ways that this message can be interpreted and delivered that is still meaningful. I'm not saying that these versions of the different kinds of connection isn't meaningful, but what I'm saying is there needs to be more power for my statement, like a statement like this to actually make some kind of ripple that I think is necessary in the world. And that's why I'm doing this project. I am a victim of statutory rape. When I was 16, a man who was 25 groomed me and pers it, it went on. And by the time I was able to realize how fuck, because I was a child, let's not, in this conversation in today's day and age, let's not fucking forget minors, there's 16, 17, stop. This, this is what I'm saying too, this conversation. So anyways, by the time I realized how fucked up the situation that I was in the last years for, by the time I, I realized it, I made a, I, I got out and I made a police report. I made a police report specifically with a line, a phone line that is for acts of violence, sexual violence against minors. And when I called them, told them everything that happened, their response was, because I've reported this at age 21, when now I'm a legal adult, because I reported it then, they can't do anything. And legally, they can't. How does, how does that work? Even when I had evidence, I had countless, endless evidence. <laughs> Even when I knew where he lived and I could give that information, and I don't doubt that they didn't believe me when I told them what happened. But they said, because you are now 21, making this crime report, even though it did happen to you, and it was when you were 16, because you're reporting it now legally, there's not anything they can do. And this is even after the fact that I was able to show them evidence and tell them how, when I told this abuser at the point when I was still 16, and I told him, we can't date because I'm 16. His response was, well, it's okay because my last girlfriend was 16. And they can't do anything. And there's something very, very fucked up in the system. And yes, big power and big changes needs to be made. 
But it's not just the system. There's something very fucked up about movies and in movies and how we are treating movies and how we are making them and the culture on a, on a more personal level that is involving more people. There's something very fucked up about the way that we are handling many, many, many cases, countless cases, reported, not reported, on sexual crime and violence. And it's not just at legal level, it's at the everyday level, socially, the way we have conversations about it and think about it too. And that can only be changed with an impact and someone who can move blocks at the bigger and smaller level. And that is why I've been recently more, I think earlier my art practice has always been very, very personal and not with some big message like this. I didn't really ever want to do this and be in this position early before because um, art's very special to me and very close to my heart and it's joyous to me. Uh, but I got in a really wonderful place with that where I saw that it doesn't have to end there. Many things can exist at the same time. And I became in a position where I found myself, I found myself to be capable of having that joyous art practice for myself and still cultivating community and reach that hopefully and not even hopefully, I've seen it happen. I know it can happen. But I want to also be able to invest my energy and creative soul into a purpose that would change the ways of the world, even if it stops at culturally, even if it stops at socially. But that I want it to be bigger. I want it to have actual substantial impact and change in the way the world works. So that someone reporting violence crimes and rape and grooming doesn't have to end up in a position like I was in so that's why I'm doing so that and that once again like it's so many layers to it right because long goal short goal and I think it comes down to it takes time I'm giving myself 15 years for this project I really am and not every video is gonna be like this where it's so bearing my bones, but I do think this is necessary to convey this and let you know this information on my driving factor of why the fuck I'm signing up for this. Like, I also think it'll be fun. It'll be so much fun to make these videos and have community. I think being able to find other people who believe in the same things as you, even before we get to that goal of big moving blocks can be so powerful for someone going through it before the change is made. So I want that. And I, when I want power so I can do something with it that I think should happen. And once again, before all those things comes time and effort and trust. And I wanna build that trust with you and with, by making these videos that are about life. It's not always this sad, it's not always happy, but it's a mixture of those. But it's that, but it is those two in between and more. <laughs> I think this will be great. I have a really good feeling about this. I have a really strong trust in this. It makes sense, it makes sense to me. And that makes me very happy. So I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> it's not gonna be like as, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.